Hi everyone, today we will talk about Anaconda, which only sounds like a big snake, but it is actually a very handy toolkit for Python developers. Now, do we have to use Anaconda? No, we can always access Python directly from our command prompt. However, Anaconda is here to make our lives much, much easier. Let me show you how. First, Anaconda helps us create something called working environments. We can think of them as separate rooms in a house. So for example, in the kitchen, we usually install a sink, a bunch of appliances and all kinds of cabinets. While in the living room, it is very common to see a sofa, a television and a coffee table. Same goes for working environments. One environment may represent the machine learning room, where it is very common to install the latest version of Python along with the newest and most advanced modules, such as PyTorch. This, while another environment may represent the game development room, where we are planning to work with Pygame, which is a very old library, so we will also need an older version of Python to accommodate it, more specifically Python 2.7. So then working environments allow us to have multiple versions of Python installed on the same computer. Each environment stores a different version and we can combine it with all kinds of packages that suit it, just like choosing furniture. And the best part is Anaconda helps us switch from one environment to the other with almost zero effort. So let's see how we can install Anaconda and create all kinds of environments with it. Now we will begin with a Linux installation tutorial and we will end with a Windows one. So stay tuned. So we will navigate to anaconda.com. We will click on products and then on the individual edition. Next, we will click on get additional installers and we will select the file version that best suits our system. In my case, that would be the 64 bit one. And we will save this file inside our downloads folder. And once the download is complete, we will simply click on this folder icon and we will copy the name of the file. We will do a right click on the file and then we will press on rename. We will then of course copy the name and we can then go ahead and open our terminal. We will do this by pressing on Control Alt T and from here we can install this newly downloaded file. We will simply type bash then the root folder slash downloads and then we will paste the name of the file we have just copied. We will press on enter and we will of course carefully read the entire license agreement of Anaconda 3 because this is so important. And once we reach the end of this very long scroll, we will simply type yes and press enter. We will confirm this installation location by pressing enter once again. And this process may take some time, so I highly recommend to grab your coffee <laughs> and to wait about five minutes. And once the installation is complete, we will simply type yes and then enter so we can initialize Anaconda. And once we do that, we have finally installed Anaconda. Congrats. Now let's go ahead and create our very first working environment. We will do this by typing conda create dash dash name and we will then select a name for this environment. In my case, I will call it env39 because I'm going to install Python 3.9 in it. Once we are ready, we will press on enter. We will press on Y. And by the way, if you guys are getting an error at this point saying that conda can't be found, I don't know where it is, I'll show you how to solve it in a few seconds. Now, if this resulted in an error, you guys can simply fix it by typing source, then root dot bash RC, and then you can press on enter, which will get you into the base environment. Now, since we're not really interested in the base environment, we actually want to access our new environment. We will simply copy this command that Anaconda politely provided to us and we will paste it and press enter. Boom, our environment is activated. You may notice that instead of the base, we are now accessing env39, which is perfect. Now let's go ahead and install PyTorch inside it. We will do this by typing conda install 
dash C, PyTorch, PyTorch. And we will press enter. We will confirm with Y. Cool. Now this took a bit more time, but now we have PyTorch installed. And we can double check that we indeed installed it by typing conda list. And this will present us with all the different packages that are installed inside env 39 We can see PyTorch is among them. We can see our version of Python is also here, which is 3.9.7. And we can see all kinds of different dependencies that we have installed along with PyTorch, such as the CUDA toolkit, which we will talk about in much more detail in future videos. And it's just a nice method to check exactly which packages, which libraries we have inside any given environment. And we will then deactivate our environment by typing conda deactivate. And we will move on with creating an additional environment where we can install Pygame. So once again, we will type conda create name. And in this case, I will call it env27 because I'm planning to install Python 2.7 in it. And again, the reason why we install such an old version of Python is because Pygame requires it. Now let's go ahead and press enter and we will activate this environment by typing conda activate env27. And once we are inside our environment, we can then go ahead and install Pygame with conda install dash c cog sci Pygame. Let's press enter. Awesome. So now we have Pygame installed and we can go ahead and start working with it. But what if we need to remove some kind of module? Let's say Pygame. We will simply type conda remove Pygame. Yes. And boom, it's gone. Our environment is empty again. It only has Python and a bunch of dependencies. This is just for demonstrational purposes. Now let's go ahead and deactivate our environment, actually conda deactivate. And if we can't remember the names of our environments, we can simply get a list of all the conda environments we have created on the computer with conda and list. Boom, we can see that we have the base environment we have env27 and we have env39. Awesome. Okay, but what if we don't want to install a new package? What if we want to update an old one? Let's go ahead and activate env39 and we will try to update PyTorch. So we will type conda update PyTorch. Now, in our case, we already have the newest version. But if you're working with an older version that needs an update, this should do the trick. And if we want to update Conda, we usually type Conda update Conda. But because our terminal is suggesting us a different command, we will simply copy it and we will paste it instead because our terminal knows best. Boom, and we have updated Conda as well. Now, I will also include a very handy link in the description of the video. Now, this would be the Anaconda cheat sheet, which is a very brief document describing all the available commands that Conda has to offer. Okay, now it's all rainbows and butterflies when I provide you the installation commands, but how would you find these commands independently? Let's say we want to install Flask. I will simply type Flask, Conda, install, and I will navigate to the anaconda.org link where we can find the best installation command at the very bottom. However, not all the libraries, not all the packages are available through Anaconda. For example, if we will do the same for the STY module, we see that there is no anaconda.org link to download this library. We have similar libraries, this one and this one, but it is not the same. So what we do is we navigate to the Python uh, package index where we find that the command to install STY is pip install STY. We will copy it, we will navigate back to our environment and we will paste it here. Boom, we have STY installed, even though 
we clearly see that we are inside a conda environment, we can still use pip install commands, which is awesome because this way we have sort of a backup in case that our anaconda command doesn't work, something there is not integrated or maybe not updated, we can always use the pip install commands. Awesome. Now, another huge benefit of Anaconda is that it comes with a code editor called Jupyter Notebook. You guys have probably seen me using it a lot in my tutorials. And now let's see how we can install it. We can easily install Jupyter Notebook by typing conda install dash C Anaconda Jupyter. And we can then open our Jupyter Notebook by typing Jupyter notebook. And as you guys can see, we are running this notebook locally. This is our computer and this is our file system. Now we can create a brand new Jupyter notebook by pressing on new. Actually, let me enlarge it because you guys don't probably don't see it well. So we navigate to a folder of our choice. In my case, that would be documents. We will press on new and then Python three. And there you go. We can now run our Python commands inside this interface. For example, print hello world. We will run this cell with shift enter, or alternatively, we can always press on this run button, but I will talk about Jupyter Notebook in much more detail in future tutorials. So that was Linux. However, if you are a Windows user, we will still navigate to anaconda.com we will still press on products and then on the individual edition. But on this page, we will click on this download button that my head was blocking earlier. And we will click on the executable file we have just downloaded. And here we can simply follow the instructions of the wizard. We will click on next. We will click on agree. We will install it just for myself because it's recommended. And then this folder, which is probably hard to see because the text is kind of small, but it says C users Maria Anaconda 3. This would be the root folder of our Anaconda installation. We will simply click on next. But as you see, in my case, I already have Anaconda installed, so it cannot create a brand new folder if it already exists. But in your case, just keep following the instructions of the wizard and I will see you after you installed it. Now, in the case of Windows, Anaconda is actually a standalone terminal. We do not access it directly from the command prompt, but we will click on the Windows icon, sorry, on the start icon, and we will type Anaconda. Now, when we see this Anaconda prompt, Anaconda 3, we'll just click on it. And there you go. That's our terminal. It's slightly big. <laughs> and here's our beautiful terminal. Now the Windows commands are actually a perfect match to the Linux commands. So in order to create a new environment, we will type conda create dash dash name. We will call it test me and we will install the latest version of Python inside it. So we will type Python equals 3.10. We will press on enter. We will confirm with Y and boom, our test me environment was created. Now, the biggest benefit, actually probably the only benefit of using an Anaconda terminal instead of the command prompt one, is that here we can activate this environment without specifying Conda. So if we will type activate without typos, test me, and we will press enter, we are inside the environment, we are no longer in the base, we are inside test me, and we didn't even have to add conda in front of this command. So I don't know if it's a very big benefit, but it's something. As to the rest of the commands, you can slightly rewind backwards to the Linux portion of the tutorial, and you can apply the exact same conda commands in Windows as well. Now, thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, you already know the drill. Please leave it a like, maybe leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, or share this tutorial with many, 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 many people. Thanks again. Bye-bye.